Hello, everyone, and thanks to our DJ, Tony Carlson, uh, always with the best music. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much. Love to see everyone tuning in from all over the world. Thank you guys so much for joining us today for this info session webinar about the Google Podcast Creator Program application for 2022. Uh, for accessibility reasons, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Alexandra Blair. I'm the project manager of the Google Podcast Creator Program. And I will introduce myself more formally in a, in a second. But for now, I'll say that I am a 30-ish year old white woman sitting on my couch, uh, surrounded by some magazines on my reading rail and my uh, artwork and some things I hope look aesthetically pleasing to everyone. Um, we are going to be using the live closed captioning feature today. So if that is something that you're interested in using, you can use that feature on Zoom. I'll be a tempting my best to uh, violate my nature and speak as slowly as possible so that the captioning can pick up what I'm saying accurately. Um, but we'll also be hosting this webinar with closed captioning on the video and a transcription that will be screen reader friendly. And that will go up to our website after the webinar is over. So if you are someone who will benefit from that um, and you have signed up for this webinar, we, you will get an email from us um, once that's up on our website so you can check it out in that way. So thanks again for joining today. Uh, it's really exciting to see everyone tuning in from all over the world. I love hearing where everyone's from. I'm in Houston, Texas. Hello. If you haven't introduced yourself or said hello yet, please do so in the chat. Um, otherwise, we have a lot of questions to get through today. So I want to get us started. Uh, as I mentioned again, my name is Alexandra Blair. I am the project manager of the Google Podcast Creator Program. So today you're going to be hearing from and seeing video from me. Um, and I'm really excited about this, excited to answer all your questions so that you guys can get your applications in before the deadline. But in the chat are my colleagues, Stephanie Quo, the director of training at PRX. She's going to be answering questions. And Tony Carlson is the manager of training at PRX. Um, if you have questions, please, please, please use the Q&A function of Zoom. We will not uh, be able to keep track of questions and things that get lost in the chat, unfortunately, just because there's so much chat that comes through. Please use the Q&A function. Um, Stephanie and Tony are going to be answering your questions in the uh, Q&A feature, and then we'll be answering a lot of them live. Some of them will be typed out, and if your question has already been asked uh, and answered, we're going to be marking that as answered or dismissing that. So please use the Q&A function. I am really excited to get started. Um, great. So uh, today's webinar, uh, an overview of the program and eligibility requirements is up first. We're going to talk about the program. We're going to talk a little bit about the curriculum. We got some great questions at last week's webinar about what exactly the curriculum is and what kind of mentors and guest speakers we have. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. We are going to be asking a lot of the pre-submitted questions and frequently asked questions that we've been getting. And then whatever time we have left, we'll all be a live Q&A uh, with the questions that you ideally put in the Q&A feature of Zoom. I think we're ready to go to the next slide. So what is the Google Podcast Creator Program? Chances are, if you are at this info session webinar, you are familiar with the Google Podcast Creator Program. But to reiterate, the Google Podcast Creator Program is a free multi-week podcast accelerator program that provides indie podcasters from around the world with creative development, audience growth, business strategies, all kinds of tools and resources and mentorship that their podcasts and that they as creators need to level up. From June through December of this year, 2022, PRX is going to select and lead six teams through a rigorous training. It's a curriculum that starts with an in-person intensive it's got 16 weeks of active training and mentorship. Then there's about a four-week break where you'll just be meeting with mentors and processing what you've learned. And then there will be a final, ideally in-person showcase celebrating all of the work uh, and a culmination of those efforts. What are we looking for? So if you have seen the application page, you've probably seen the things that we're looking for here. And that is applicants that have already been producing media and podcasts for at least three years. This is a very common question we've been getting. So I'll answer it right up front. Three years is not a hard and fast requirement. If your podcast has existed for two seasons and two years, apply. We want to hear from you. If you feel your concept is strong and you have proven experience podcasting, we want to hear from you. 
Um, we are also looking for people who have some kind of success and or enthusiasm with their current or past podcast projects, either through audience growth, really good concepts and ideas. Maybe you've branched out in a few different ways or you have a successful crowdfunding campaign or a really successful live event series. Maybe you have some institutional or branded partnerships. We wanna hear from you. If you're experiencing some level of success and enthusiasm, but you just don't know how to capitalize on it and really take yourself to the next level. We are definitely looking for people who are interested in making their podcast sustainable through teamwork, openness to iteration and change. Most of our teams go through pretty dramatic pivots and changes in their concepts and offerings. Um, we are looking for people who are interested in pursuing revenue growth and audience growth and business development. Uh, through their podcast. And so what makes a uh, oh, second slide of what we're looking for? We're looking for people who are willing to pause production during the program. We have a question on this later, so I will uh, put a pin in that for now. Um, we are looking for teams that already have baseline technical and editorial skills. We will not be teaching um, sound editing or technical skills. We are assuming that if you apply, you already have those skills. Um, of course, we will be able to support you if you're looking to um, develop the skills you already have in a way that better supports your vision. That is something we can do. But teaching teams audio editing from scratch is not part of this program's curriculum. And then finally, we are looking for teams and creators and podcasts that represent a range of geographies, backgrounds, views, voices, and styles. We love having really, really diverse and unique cohorts um, so that people can really cross-pollinate and get to know each other and help each other be better. So what makes a strong application with those things in mind? A strong concept, number one, uh, you have to have a good idea. That, that's really exciting to us. We are looking for creators and teams with audio experience. So seeing your experience is going to make your application stand out. Hearing your passion. There's a question specifically on the application where you are able to submit any type of media file, text, PowerPoint, audio, video, where we get to hear your passion. Really letting us hear how excited you are about your concept is going to help your application stand out. Um, we are looking for someone who has a clear sense of needs from the program. What do you need from us? If we know your pain points and your barriers, we are going to honestly really your application is going to stand out. And we'll look at why in just a second here. Um, we are looking for people who are really excited about their project. That goes back to that passion piece. People who have a strong and clear vision for their project with some kind of surprising or unexpected concept, twist, something unique that we haven't heard before that doesn't exist in the world yet. So that is what can really make a strong application for the Google Podcast Creator Program. Now we got some questions last week along these lines. And I wanted to address these today. So what are you going to learn from this training? Well, this training has many different pieces. It starts with creative development. Now I can already hear a lot of people saying, and this is probably true. My idea is already great. I already have the best idea. That's probably true. But as it turns out, most people who participate in our trainings emerge with this sense of, I never would have expected blank and some kind of pivot from the training. Um, most teams that we hear from who've gone through the training feel like they made some big changes they would never have made previously. Some even changing the entire podcast and the name and the concept. So we are definitely doing some creative development in the trainings. We are also going to help you think about and define what your niche is and what your audience needs. So at PRX, we teach audience first podcasting and audience audience designed podcasting. So we use a proprietary uh, design thinking curriculum that is really exciting. And most people take that with them, not just to other podcast projects, but onto other creative and professional projects for many years down the line. And we hear a lot of that. Um, there's also a lot of work in our curriculum about process. So we talk about uh, workflow. We do an auditing of your workflow, and then we'll do an idealized version of your workflow. We'll help you identify your team's pain points and leverage points in your own team's resources. Um, we'll also help you learn how to prototype new ideas with reduced cost and risk. 
Um, and we will talk about some success metrics and goal setting so that your team isn't trying to achieve some other team's goals so that your team really has a clear idea of what their goals are and are all working towards the same thing. This training as well will have new and improved, both new and improved sections on business developments. So we'll have everything from business planning, talking about podcast optionality, as we did in the um, podcasting as a sum of its parts webinar, which I'll, I'll drop a link in for you um, somewhere. We talked a little bit about podcast optionality and what that means right here. We'll also be talking about viability and sustainability, including a viability and sustainability fair, sort of like a scholastic book fair for those of us who experienced that as kids, um, where you get to meet and talk to a bunch of people who have been successful in many different ways in the podcasting industry and the audio space. Um, and we're going to be talking to some data pros about how to leverage your data to tell the story of your podcast to potential partners um, or funding sources. We'll also be talking about audience growth and developing some audience growth strategies. We'll talk generally about marketing for audio, again, about that podcast optionality piece, which is all of the things that can fall under the brand umbrella of your show and you as a creator that can feed your show with money and with attention and audience growth. We'll also be talking about leveraging those pain and gain points on your team so that you can meet your audience where they are rather than leaving this sort of paper trail of failures. You're going to actually be looking for where your audience is and then running to meet them there. Um, what else will we learn from this training? I think a really important note is that this training curriculum will adapt to fit the specific pain points of the creators we choose to participate in the training. Um, we are going to serve every pain point you guys outline within our ability in your application. So in that question in the application, I would encourage all of you, be honest with us. When we're asking what your pain points are, we really want to know because we are developing curriculum in real time to support your pain points and to help you guys learn how to manage those. So definitely be honest. We also had this question last time, who are our mentors? Who are the people that work with the program um, in, in guest speaker capacity and mentor capacity? And really the mentors are a diverse group of international thought leaders, genuinely, truly international. We'll look at some of their faces in a minute here, um, but people working in many different corners of audio space, people working in production, people working in marketing, people who work at networks and studios that you've definitely heard of. Um, probably some that you haven't that you'll get excited about along the way. Um, we're going to talk to people who are hosts of podcasts, who write podcasts, who design podcasts, and many more types of professionals. So we have a broad range of mentors that come in to guest speak and also to do direct one-on-one -on -one mentorship with our program participants. This group of individ individuals has committed to um, actually to mentoring independent podcasters and connecting those podcasters with resources or people from their own networks. Um, they represent this, a really wide range of geographies, backgrounds, views, voices, and styles, which is what we look for in every part of our program, guest speakers, mentors, but also in our participants. So these are just a few faces, a handful. You can see the full list of mentors and alumni online. I'll drop the link to that right now on our program page. We have a lot. This is just a starting point as well. We've added a lot more. And again, if you are honest in your application, we can serve you with mentors. If we don't have someone on this list that you want to see on here, guess what? Uh, if we don't know them, we know somebody who does know them. And we will find ways to connect you with people that are actually going to serve you and help your show get better. That's a huge priority for us. So again, definitely be honest at those points uh, in the application where we ask what it is you need. Just be totally honest with us so that we can serve you. Um, in terms of guest speakers and workshops, here's just a few examples of guest speakers and workshops that we've had in recent memory. So this one is really awesome. I love this. Uh, Lauren Silverman from Gimlet, I just dropped a link in the chat, uh, led this webinar, How to Make a Kick-Ass Podcast Without Burning Out, where she walks us through a document that she uses every day at Gimlet to create a core sort of control panel for all of her shows. 
So definitely the without burnout, yes, uh, is a really amazing part of it. So Lauren was an awesome guest speaker we had last year at the Google Podcast Creator Program. We also have Jocelyn Gonzalez, PRX's very own, join us and talk about one of the more um, just well-loved. We have Jocelyn come back for every cohort because she is truly brilliant. And she helps you think about how to engage your audience with sound design and how to make a sound mood board for your show that can actually kind of help your team get aligned about what it should sound like and what every episode should feel like. And the sound mood board, actually, we've had a number of people who participated in our programs who are full on fundraising or getting um, institutional support for their show just based on the sound mood board. So this has been a really transformational webinar that we hosted as well. Um, some individuals from the Vox Media team actually joined us last cohort to do a guest webinar about how to think about podcast analytics. And that was really cool watching them dive into the data dashboards and tell us different ways that they would leverage that data. That's kind of a microcosm, a small way to think about how we'll be talking about your data in this program and teaching you to kind of leverage that data. And then we had a series of panels over the fall. So these weren't directly for the cohorts, but these are the types of conversations and things that we'll, we're going to be talking about in this new round. Um, how to make your podcast more than the sum of its parts. I've dropped this link a few times. I'm going to drop it again. This is really about podcast optionality, about a really awesome group of creators. That's um, Sarah Azubel and Bia Guimares of Trente Seche Grouse. And we have Dan Sachs of Noodle Loaf and Katie Osuna of Copper and Heat. They all joined us to talk about all of the different things they do that aren't podcasting, that bring in money and bring in attention and bring in partnerships to them as creators and to their brand. So that is a really cool panel. We're going to be talking a lot about podcast optionality. We also had a panel this fall about how to make a successful podcast pitch. So joining us for that panel was Justine Lang of Pushkin. We had Lauren Silverman, uh, a perennial favorite from Gimlet. We had Christian Jatar of Sonoro Media. And we also had our very own Jason Saldana, the chief of business development at PRX, join us to talk about what makes a good podcast pitch. And these are people who receive podcast pitches every day at these organizations. So this is the type of thing that you're going to have available to you during the program. And then finally, another webinar we had this fall um, is how to navigate the world of podcast festivals. This one was really cool. We had Dan Franks of Podcast Movement, which just recently happened, and Jess Kupferman from She Podcast. Um, we had Emily Kennedy and Maya goldberg Safir from Third Coast. And we also had Josephine Karen Jahi of Africa Podfest join us for this. So they talked about kind of what podcasters can hope to get from podcast festivals, how to find your tribe at a podcast festival, and all kinds of really, um, really good tips about podcast festivals. So these links and everything, uh, pretty much everything we've ever done uh, exists on our website. And um, I'll send a link to that right now where you can go see all of these webinars. We actually even have more than this. And these are just the free and open resources that we provide to anyone who's interested in the program. So imagine how cool all of the kind of closed door guest speakers and workshops are going to be happening in the program. So definitely apply. Um, hopefully, if you're here, you're still thinking of applying. So we're going to turn to the submitted questions. We received hundreds of questions through our early submission form. So I'm going to go through some of the most commonly asked questions. Um, as Steph says, please put um, your questions in the Q&A. If you notice that your question gets dismissed, we're probably not ignoring you. It's probably in the slides. So definitely um, put those in the Q&A and we'll get to your questions. First question, can someone uh, from a non-podcasting background still apply for the program? Can you have been podcasting for under three years? Is there a minimum amount of published episodes of my podcast? We've gotten a lot of questions along these lines. The answer is that this training is specifically geared towards supporting and advancing the work of individuals who are currently making audio projects. So if you are not currently making an audio project or if your project is still in the idea phase, this training just is not going to be that helpful for you. In the past, we offered trainings for people who were still in the idea phase, um, but this one you might 
you know, we're not going to be prioritizing those applications because you're really going to be feeling behind with a lot of the work that we're doing. And that's definitely not what we want for you. Um, and it really won't be helpful. So what we're looking for is individuals who already have a podcast that they are currently producing. There is no minimum number of podcasts you've produced to apply. And three years of experience is not a hard and fast rule. That is a rough estimate. So if you feel you are experienced, let's all together challenge that imposter syndrome. If you think, yeah, I do have experience podcasting. I would love for you guys to apply. Please apply. And um, we'd like to hear from you. If you have never made a podcast before, or if your podcast is still in the idea phase, definitely not the right training for you. If you've been making radio or audio pieces for five years, but this is your first podcast, maybe. Um, if you're in the maybe category, definitely apply. If you've never made a podcast before, not for you. Um, the next question, we've gotten a lot along these lines. Is it mandatory to stop production of the podcast during the months of June to December? Can we clarify that requirement? Yes. So no one is going to be disqualified from this application on the basis of not being able to pause production. However, we strongly, strongly encourage this from our team and our team will actually help you develop messaging and branding and marketing that you can put out around that time or help you develop, um, you know, sort of messaging that you can give to your partners or funders to try to pause production. And the reason for that is that Shows that are able to pause production typically demonstrate better results in pretty much every way. So they're able to get more from the trainings. They're able to give more to their cohort members, to their peers. They're able to internalize and reflect and actually make the changes. We've seen that the few podcasts we've worked with that were not able to stop production are routinely kind of feeling frazzled and behind and overwhelmed. I want to reiterate that the curriculum for this program is pretty rigorous. Um, and so we do ask and really, really push for our teams to be able to pause production. And that is partially why we offer some funding to offset those costs as well. Um, this curriculum is intensive and it will require a significant time investment. So will the where will the in-person training take place? How long will it be? Can we attend that virtually? What about COVID? Is the training conducted virtual? We've gotten a lot of questions along these lines. Um, the first week of the training at this point is the only piece of the training that will definitely occur in person. We have an in-person intensive scheduled to take place in San Francisco. Um, this in-person week is gonna be in late June, early July. A specific date and location is going to be provided to those who are accepted. Um, we we are definitely going to prefer in-person attendance. However, we understand that there's a global situation happening right now. We understand that we are working with international cohorts. So we are going to work with the selected teams to make sure that everyone who's chosen will, can and will be able to participate in whatever capacity is safe and possible. Um, we are going to adapt and adhere to whatever COVID protocols may be happening regionally in San Francisco or at our host organization, or from our own organization. Um, we just can't at this time anticipate what those are going to be. So as we get closer to the date, we will be messaging with teams who are chosen. No teams will be disqualified if they can't travel, or if for some reason um, they're not able to make it. We're going to work with you, and we're going to figure it out. Um, another related question, what if I require a visa to participate in the in-person training, or if you're attending from overseas? What if I can't attend in San Francisco? Is PRX going to help me write letters of support for an expedited visa? Um, we have definitely done this before. So we are going to notify all selected teams as early as is possible. Um, it will really depend on the amount of applications that we receive. Hopefully a lot. Hopefully we will notify you all by the end of May, the beginning of June. Um, but we will aid the visa application process to the fullest of our ability. So we have definitely done this for teams in the past and made it happen for many international teams uh, before. All costs related to the visa process are gonna be covered by us. So, you know, if you're not able to attend, we may still be able to accommodate you. So I would recommend applying and just find a space to note that in your application, um, but definitely do not let anxieties about the visa get in the way of applying. Apply and we'll work with you and we'll figure it out together.
Um, is this program doable for people who have full-time jobs? How many hours per week is this training taking place? And what is the schedule of the program? So definitely everyone, for the most part, who's ever participated in this program has had other jobs and other things that they do. So I think it is very doable for people who have full-time jobs. In terms of the hours per week and the schedule of the training, we went over the curriculum a little bit earlier. This is an in-person, this is an intensive training rather with rigorous curriculum. And the hours per week will really depend on you and your podcast team's needs and how much effort you put into the program. I would say the teams can expect to spend a minimum of 10 hours a week during the program doing some combination of the following. So in the past, we've had weekly online sessions based on the availabilities of the participating teams. Um, at some point during the week, typically bi-weekly, um, you'll be meeting with your program mentors and industry professionals who we may be connecting you with to help your uh, podcast develop. You'll be completing some assignments and those assignments are never going to be busy work. It's always actual working time that you'll spend with your team, actually expanding your thinking and developing your workflow and developing your business strategies. So those are going to feel probably more like things that you've had on your to-do list for some time, but can't ever find the time for like writing a business plan or a mission statement or developing a formal marketing strategy or developing a job listing for a marketing person. So you don't have to develop your own marketing strategy. Um, we are also actually going to ask you to produce some new audio during the training. So there will be some of that. And then a huge part of our trainings and what makes our training special is that our cohorts really get to know one another and give each other candid feedback all throughout the entire training. So we will be asking you to give feedback to other teams and you will be receiving feedback from other teams. Um, so typically we say you're going to spend a minimum of 10 hours a week. People who are really excited about the program and interested in the program. Um, which has been everyone who's participated before, for the most part, um, typically spend up to 20 hours a week doing this work. Um, this is part why we actually ask people to pause production as well, because as anyone who has experience with podcasting knows, you're probably uh, spending a lot, a lot of time working on your podcast in addition to your full-time job. So um, being able to reroute some of that time to these podcast developing assignments and curriculum and meetings is going to make your life a lot easier. We got this really good question last week and I wanted to read the exact text of the question. The global outreach of this program brings to mind the adage, if you speak to everyone, you speak to no one. How will you tailor business and growth strategies to specific creator markets? And this is a great question because this is an adage that we talk about a lot in our trainings. And this is that actually gets to the universal piece of our podcast trainings, which is this kind of revolutionary, but very well-known idea. If you're making something for everyone, you're actually not making something for anyone. So our mentors, guest speakers, and alumni are a cohort with broad geographical reach. And our curriculum will be adapting to the unique concerns, regions, and pain points of the creators chosen to participate. So we are able to connect you with mentors and professionals and audio industry folks from all over the world. So we're definitely going to be able to find people who speak to and reach your region. And if you are honest in the application, we are definitely going to be able to address your pain points. Um, the, the meaningful principles around creating audience-driven podcasts are universal, meaning this statement, you can't make something for everyone. That is the universal tenet that applies to any market. But this program, because it is so international, is designed with emerging podcast ecosystems in mind. And it's backed by quantitative and qualitative data around those ecosystems. So we do have some data for some ecosystems that are emerging, in particular in like Latin America um, or in certain places in Europe. We have a lot of really good data. We also practice what we preached and we reached out to a lot of mid career podcasters. And we actually interviewed them and did an entire empathy interview process and a user interview process where we asked, what are your biggest pain points? And we heard the same things over and over again for people working in really diverse geographical regions. So the answer is we are definitely going to adapt to your needs in the beginning, but also throughout the way. If we get to week 10 and you're like, I still haven't heard anything that solves this problem for me, 
We're going to adapt to that. We are going to support you in that way. But also we've done a lot of the work on the back end before um, by asking about these things in the application and also by interviewing alumni of this program and other mid-career podcasters to see what their actual pain points are across the world. Great. I have previously applied. Can I apply again? Are GPCP PRX Accelerator alum eligible to apply? Can I get feedback on my previous application? So yes, yes, and no. Yes, this program is going to be very fundamentally different from the first two rounds of the Google Podcast Creator Program, and it is geared towards mid-career podcasters. So people who have participated in PRX Accelerators before are definitely still eligible to apply. Um, at this time, we are not able to give feedback on individual applications just for the sheer volume. For this program alone, we've received over 1,400 applications and we are a team of three on this call. Exactly. So <laughs> um, we are not able to provide individualized feedback on individual applications. If you've applied before, you can definitely apply again. I would say shop your previous applications around to friends and peers that you know working in this industry and get some feedback from them and then maybe go from there. Um, the next question, how and when will applicants be notified if they are selected into the program? So all applicants will be notified by email at the very latest in early June. And that's that. Great. So use those Q&A functions. I'm going to be in here looking at this. Um, here we go. Do people have to apply as individuals or can you apply with an organization? So the question about that and the team, um, you can submit with just one person's name on the application. We uh, want to have one primary point of contact for your team. If you put the other person's contact info in there, um, you know, like that's okay. As soon as your application potentially advances to the next stage, we're going to be in touch with you and your teammate. Um, as we have discussed on the previous webinar, we actually are only able to accommodate two members of each team in our trainings for size reasons. So if your team is larger than two people, um, we are not able to accommodate more than two. You'll have to pick two people to participate in the training. There will be some events like the webinars that I posted, for example, where you will be able to invite other members of your team. And we will let you know about those in advance. But participation in the week-long intensive and in the week-to-week -week curriculum is only going to be possible for two people from your team. Um, Tracy asks, if we are a team of two, could we really only have that one person's name on the application? Yes, just have a, a primary point of contact. The moment we advance your application to the next level, we will incorporate that other person and involve them. It just really helps us to have one primary point of contact for the application. Um, an anonymous attendee asks, if my podcast is one year old, but we've been conceptualizing it for a couple of years, do you think it's still worth applying um, or should we wait? Um, I think that if you feel strong about the concept of your podcast, you should definitely apply um, go for it. Um, we have a question about the criteria that will be taken into consideration when assessing, um, applications and that I have definitely already answered in the beginning of this presentation. If you missed the beginning of the presentation, the presentation will be available on our website and it will have closed captions and a screen reader friendly transcript. You'll be emailing that page once it goes live to everyone who's attended the webinars. Um, I see a question asking, um, last session you said it's okay to submit a podcast that's going to launch soon. Now it seems like it has to be out there. How do you define the ideation stage and whether or not that may suit this program? I'm in production mode. I've been doing audio project for a few years now, but I haven't launched the project yet. So if you have been creating audio projects for a few years, you are experienced enough to apply to the to the project. It's okay if the project hasn't formally launched yet. If you've never made a podcast before and you just have an idea, this is not the right training for you. This probably isn't going to be the right training for someone who just has an idea as well. Um, if you feel really strongly about your concept, definitely apply. 
Um, but we are looking for ideally mid-career podcasters, people who have been making podcasts that are out in the world for some time, who have experience, who have some good buzz going on. They've got like great press, or maybe they have a really excited audience where they have a robust crowdfunding campaign, but they just can't figure out how to turn the exciting things they're seeing into a business. And that's really what this, what this program is for. So if you feel like that conceptually is going to benefit you, I encourage you to apply. That is why we are freezing our asks the way that we are. Um, I have an interesting question. If you are affiliated with an organization and get selected, is it possible to have the funds sent to that organization or does the money need to go to individuals? Um, I don't know that we have a clear cut answer for that. I can't see a, foresee a problem with institutional or organizational development. We've had several other podcasts before that have been projects associated with 501c3s or with institutions like museums uh, or news outlets, and we have worked with them before. So definitely uh, still apply. Um, Patrick asks, if we are working on a brand new podcast that has yet to launch, can we submit this new project as opposed to one of our pre-existing podcasts? Um, yes, you can do that. If you have experience working in podcasting and audio, um, you definitely can. Again, I think that the curriculum is better suited for a podcast that already exists in the world. So you might get more out of the training if you are applying with an existing podcast. Um, Ad Alberto asks, do you focus more strongly on teams or can you be a solo creator? Definitely, we've worked with solo creators before. You are more than welcome to apply and we are happy to have you. So you do not have to have a team of two to apply and to participate. Um, if you are a solo creator, good for you. And we are happy to work with you. Um, I have this question in here about what does success look like for you? Um, what do I hope the podcasts do as a result of the program they go through? It's a great question. I think one of the most exciting things that I see when podcasts emerge is that they have a lot more confidence about their concept. Most of the creators who go through the program emerge with an ironclad concept, just with a concept they feel so proud of and so excited about. And usually all that is required is just some very slight changing in how they're thinking about their show and how they're serving their audience. I think if teams emerge from the program with a stronger idea of who their audience is, that's also a win. Um, for this training in specific, I think that we are hoping that teams will emerge with a stronger sense of how their podcast can be sustainable financially and in terms of resources like time um, in the long run. So teams with a plan, an actual kind of business plan um, and an audience growth strategy, that's going to be success for us. Ultimately, I love seeing our team's smiling faces in our year-end rap videos that we do where they talk about what they learned. Those exist on our website and on our social media. So you can check those out to see what teams have said um, from previous involvement in the program. Uh, Felipe asks about the question, which I mentioned before, that is about detailing your ultimate vision for your podcast. Um, it is a media file question on the application. So it allows for any medium at all, words, video, audio, presentations, et cetera. Um, he wants to know if it's text, is there a character limit? Is it audio or video? Is there a time limit? There is not one, and I uh, reveal that with the hope that you will use that responsibly. Um, again, we are a very small team, and we look through each and every one of these applications. So if it's a 20-minute video, probably not going to be able to listen to a 20-minute video, to be totally honest. Um, if it is 30-page document, that's a controversial submission, but uh, we'll do our best to review uh, the answers to those questions for people who submit them. So. Use that information responsibly, please. Um, an anonymous attendee asks, uh, oh, no, that got dismissed. Okay. Um, Vidya asks, I've been podcasting for three years. What is the expectation that you mention when you're looking for prior audio experience? Are you saying prior to the podcast? Um, no, that is not what we mean. We are looking for people who have experienced podcasting, period. Um, if you've been podcasting this podcast for three years, good for you. And yes, you are definitely eligible to apply. Um, Anonymous asks about stages of application. We'll be messaging that to people who've applied 
once the application period closes, there will be a few stages of review on our team's part. And there will probably be an interview portion where we'll talk to some number of finalists and get to know you a little better. Um, do we need a team to participate in the program? No. An anonymous attendee asks, if my podcast does not have a huge amount of downloads, can I apply? Yes, absolutely. You do not need to have a huge amount of downloads. Your podcast does not need to be something everybody knows about in order to apply. Definitely apply. We are excited. There is a portion of the training where we look at your data and we will teach you how to find really exciting pieces of your data that you can reference that aren't just downloads. In fact, there is a whole module of our training about why downloads are dead and download is not a good metric of success. So don't worry. If you don't have a lot of downloads, definitely still apply. Um, I've seen a couple questions in this and other trainings about people of certain ages. We've definitely had people of all ages and all demographics in our trainings. Please apply regardless of your age. That is not a thing that we consider uh, when we are looking at the applications. Monica asks, would we spend time preparing our future shows during this or would that be outside of class? Curious then after a long pause when people tend to launch their show. So would they have prepared the show during the training? So this is in part why we are emphasizing and prioritizing applications of people who are already working on a show. This curriculum is not at this point suited for someone who is launching a show. We have definitely had programs that do that in the past. So if your application gets submitted and that's where you're at, we will meet you there. It might be extra work for you to catch up. And as I have said before, you might be feeling a little bit behind. So we are definitely prioritizing people who actually have podcasts in the works. Um, let's see, Shiva asks, if we have several podcasts, including a traveling podcast for which we paused production during COVID, um, would that meet the requirements, even though it doesn't display consistent episodes? Uh, yes, definitely submit. We've had a number of questions like this where COVID has significantly impacted someone's ability to produce or where global events have really changed the scope of someone's podcast. Definitely, definitely does not um, disqualify you. And the messy question is okay, Shiva. Don't worry about it. Definitely apply. If you have experience podcasting and you want help with your podcast and you need to figure out how to level it up, we are here to help you. And we would love to receive your application and uh, review it. Um, Dudu asks, I have had a YouTube channel for three years. I am translating that three-year content into a podcast because it is not time sensitive and then developing a new concept for a new podcast. I have a production team. I don't do my own editing. Am I going to be at a disadvantage? I don't think so. That sounds great. Part of our training that we're going to be talking about is video strategy. So you're going to be ahead of the curve there. Um, also, the process of translating evergreen content into a podcast is, many would say, putting you at an advantage because you are not doing a ton of that really heavy, timely journalism style lifting. So definitely you can apply. I would recommend that. Sounds like you have an interesting project. Um, Von Anise asks a similar question. We have a podcast that's been on air on YouTube for almost two years, but it's not, it doesn't exist as a podcast yet. Is that okay? Um, yes, definitely still apply. Um, we are going to be talking specifically about video, video strategies, um, and we are considering video podcasts. Um, which is sort of an oxymoronic term, but we are considering video podcasts to be a uh, podcast. Um, Aileen asks, I have made over 30 podcast productions in the past five years. Aileen just snaps for that. That's awesome. Um, I started my own podcast production company. The question got better. Last fall with this new company, I'm about to start a new podcast uh, totaling 10 episodes. Can I apply with this podcast? Yes, I think I've covered this a few times. You can definitely apply. I think you will find the program more helpful if you apply with a podcast that already exists because there are parts of the curriculum where you talk about your current audience and things like that. You definitely could use a stand-in, one of your 30 podcast productions for those pieces and then translate what you've learned. Um, so if you, uh, if you think that you would still benefit from this curriculum, definitely apply. We'd love to hear from you. Um, I see one in the chat. Definitely put questions if you can in the Q&A, but about 
uh, hours of availability for the week in San Francisco. So these days, um, the hours and availability will kind of depend on the cohort's availability. So everyone who's chosen, whether they're available. Um, but typically what we do is we have a full kind of business day gathering with a lot of design work and really interesting concepts that we bring up right away. You're going to get to know your cohort members. We typically do some kind of creative review, which is where you actually get to present your podcast concept to your peers and you get feedback, not just from your peers, but also from industry professionals that we invite to give you feedback in that first week even. Um, so I would say that you can plan for those business days to be full. And then usually we have some fun stuff that we do too. I think one of our previous Google cohorts went to a game at uh, a Red Sox game at Fenway Park or, um, at, you know, having at least some kind of reception dinner and drinks. So there's a lot of fun stuff that happens during that week too. And you're definitely going to get to know your cohort members. A lot of our cohorts are still in touch and they still reach out to their peers to um, ask them for help or for questions or for pod swaps. So that is a really important time that we try not to pack with just work, work, work. Um, it's really about team building and getting to know your cohort because they're going to have your back for the next few years, especially as you become an alumni of this program and we start engaging you to give talks and sessions and guest speakers for us too. So uh, that's a really fun week and we are really excited and optimistic about doing that in person in San Francisco this year. Um, why are only six teams selected? Uh, that is the terms of the grant that we are working with here. And we definitely need to keep our cohorts somewhat small because we like to give really in-depth, really personalized one-on-one -on -one mentorship to each of the teams. So we try to keep them as small as possible, um, especially once we get to virtual training. Um, I guess in person is just as hard, but it, it can be really hard for two facilitators to uh, be teaching a group of 20 people because then it feels like we're not really able to give you that personalized mentorship and attention that you guys really deserve. And that is the keystone of this program. Um, Sean asks, we've been doing a podcast for three years. One year of our contract is on another platform. Is that going to affect us? No, that shouldn't be a problem. Anyone with concerns like that, definitely voice them in your application. Um, we've worked with teams in weirder situations than you probably uh, so hit us with it and we'll figure it out together. Um, Sebastian asks, if my goal is to be a Spotify exclusive podcast, can I achieve that with this program? So I don't know if you'll be able to achieve that with this program, but we will definitely be able to support that goal in this program. So a big part of the program is setting those success metrics right up front in the program. And what we actually do is we are going to learn what your goals are, and then we're going to work to develop all of our kind of curriculum and all of our mentorship and assign you with mentors and professionals who are going to support those goals, whether it's at Spotify or other Spotify exclusive creators um, or, you know, other team members that you don't have yet that are going to uh, kind of help support that goal. So whatever your goals are, we're going to serve them. We've had people who've entered the program hoping to become and stay a 501c3 or to get uh, institutional support from a, you know, a, a grant funded organization. There's a lot of different um, goals that we are able to support. And part of that is through our robust network of mentors and guest speakers. So all of those goals are part of the program. Um, let's see, does the podcast have to be in English? No, no, it doesn't. Uh, I can't believe I haven't said that already. Um, because that's a question we get a lot. No, your podcast does not have to be in English. We do have a limited capacity as a team to support um, training in other languages. We are currently working on translation and transcription and we're doing our best. But at this point, we are requiring proficiency and fluency in English to participate in the training. So your team members are gonna need to be fluent in English to participate in the training. There is space on the application for you to indicate your team's fluency or proficiency in other languages. So please feel free to do that because that information really helps us know where we should allocate our resources for translation and transcription. And we are really trying to do our best with that. So definitely, um, if your podcast is not in English, there are going to be some moments where you're going to have to translate, sometimes live. Sometimes in, uh, you know, if you're going to play us an audio sample, we're going to need a transcription of some kind so that we can follow along as well. Um, but 
we have definitely had teams that have participated and done all of the work of the program in another language. That's totally fine. As long as you can translate that work to us, that's awesome. But we love to see you doing that work in a way that feels authentic to you. And I will support that in any way or time that I can. Um, I have a question from Abigail. How do we handle uh, content dealing with uncomfortable topics? Um, or potentially using adult language or adult content. We have definitely worked with teams along these lines before. So that does not disqualify you. Go ahead and apply. Um, we work with all kinds of teams. You can look at our alumni page. Definitely in this accelerator and in other accelerators right now, we just wrapped one in Africa that deals with um, health and women's issues in on the African continent. So um, we have definitely had our fair share of um, quote unquote, adult content and adult language in our podcast. That's not disqualifying at all. In fact, your podcast can be any format, any topics. We'd love to hear from you. Please apply. Um, I see this question in the chat that says, if I've applied, should I use that same application or start over? Um, if you've applied in a previous year, I think you are going to want to start over for sure, just because this application and program is very, very different. Um, than previous applications and programs. So we're going to be asking different things. You might reuse some of that same content. Um, I'd recommend if you didn't get selected before to kind of float that by a couple of friends or peers that work in the industry and get feedback from them about how you might strengthen it. Um, Yura asks, I'm trying to make season three of my podcast in another language. I'm just not sure how. Is that something I can work through in this program? Yes. In fact, one of my favorite alumni, uh, if I'm allowed to say so, is a team that, you know, was really wanting to create a bilingual podcast. They went through the entire training. And when we got to the process piece, they realized by auditing their workflow that they were actually making two separate monolingual podcasts. They were making one in Spanish and one in English. And their goal was to make something bilingual. So we actually helped them work through how they could create a workflow that would support a bilingual podcast. So yes, that's definitely something we could work through in the training era. Um, when is the next time we'll have this program? That's a great question. And I, I uh, don't exactly have a public answer for you yet. So definitely apply uh, for now. This is the one, one iteration of this program that will exist. And it's definitely the one iteration of this program that will exist this year. It runs from June through December. So definitely apply. Jen Hardy asks if we have a link to the alumni page. Yes, I do. Um, I will drop that in the chat for you. Great. There we go. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much. It looks like we're just about coming up on time. Any last minute questions I might be able to type an answer to or link to in the chat. Um, but we answered a lot. We also have the previous info session that you can visit here. Um, I just dropped the link in the chat and we will be again, transcribing and closed captioning this session and emailing a link to this session. Once it goes up on the website for everyone who registered for the webinar, I believe. And so you'll be able to get that. If you guys are here, um, check our website and, or we'll send you an email. I'm so glad. Thanks. You're so welcome, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Um, we tried to answer all your questions. Hopefully we did. Mwah. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you.